Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Gyeonggi Province this week. Gyeonggi Province has extended the application deadline for the second round of disaster basic income payments to 11 p.m. of March 31st. Applications are being received via the Gyeonggi Disaster Basic Income website. Those who are unable to make online applications can receive payments in person at local public offices during the period from March 1st to April 30th. Gyeonggi Province is currently receiving youth basic income payment applications for the first quarter of the year. Any 24-year-old who has resided in the province for more than three years continuously, or for more than 10 years in total, is eligible to apply. This year, it is also possible for applicants to receive a lump sum payment for the whole year if they choose to do so. Applications are being received online via the Kyungi Employment Platform until March 26th. On March 3rd and 4th, a seasonal fine dust control campaign took place at Pyeongtaek Port. This campaign coincided with free vehicle exhaust reduction device checks and non-contact inspections of air pollutant emitting sites in the area. These events were organized in follow-up to an agreement on dust reduction in the Pyeongtaek and Dangjin port districts signed in November last year by Gyeonggi Province, the Metropolitan Air Quality Management Office, the Gum River Basin Environmental Office, the Pyeongtaek Regional Office of Oceans and Fisheries, and South Chungcheong Province. During the campaign, banners and signs were used to publicize the seasonal fine dust control system and to restrict the entry of Class 5 emission vehicles into Pyeongtaek Port. Gyeonggi Province recently announced plans to install air purifiers on 20 buses on three routes, the first such initiative in Korea, so as to reduce health hazards and the spread of contagions while improving air quality for bus users. These air purifiers are expected to remove more than 99% of fine dust as well as more than 93% of airborne viruses and bacteria from bus interiors. Installed on bus ceilings, these devices will be capable of swiftly filtering fine dust originating from outside and passenger clothing. This year, Gyeonggi Province will continue its apartment services that provide customized support for building management, repairs, and remodeling throughout the life cycle of apartments. Services include inspection, management audits and technical support, as well as maintenance and safety management cost support. Gyeonggi Province plans to open a one-stop support center for digital sex crime victims, the first of its kind among Korean area-wide autonomies, at the Provincial Human Resource Development Institute. This center will be staffed by consultants and specialists who can help users return to normal daily life and refer them to medical and legal consultation services when necessary. Any digital sexual crime victim in the province can access the center's services via Kakao Talk, email, or phone. Gyeonggi Province announced plans to develop the Convenience Facility Smart App. This app will provide individuals with limited mobility, such as those with disabilities, seniors, pregnant women and children with information about facilities installed for their convenience via smartphones. The information provided will include the location of amenities such as restrooms, access ramps and elevators for the disabled as well as route directions provided based on GPS. This app, the first of its kind in Korea, is slated for release in July. In addition, the province will provide 200 private facilities with support of up to 500,000 Korean won each for the installation of access ramps for wheelchairs and strollers. 
Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.